It's nice uh, privilege to be with this group two Wednesdays in a row. I <laughs> could be a habit. You know? could be a habit. <laughs> you, got a, you got a membership. Well, plus it got me out of our legal lunch every Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> the city attorney. It's nice not to have anything on the legal agenda, but it, we still have to go as well. Before I start, uh, I'd like to recognize a couple of your fellow Kwanians uh, for their support and efforts uh, with Redmond Fire and Rescue. And first of all, Gary Olernshaw, who is a rural fire district board member. Uh, John, you were talking about volunteering, and, and certainly Gary puts a lot of time in, I know, throughout the community, but he's uh, one of our board members who does an outstanding job. I do a great job spending your tax money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish it was like that. He's very stingy with us. <laughs> but Gary does a great job and is very supportive of our operation. And then Carl Bertries, who is uh, playing a volunteer role. We are uh, in the process of putting together the history of Redmond Fire Department, all the way back from its inception uh, to date. And I think when we started, we did not realize what a big undertaking that was. And Carl has come in midstream and, and has been given the task to take all of the information and with his Redmond spokesman experience, put all that into a book that we can uh, sell or, or give away at, at the Centennial, which is next June. So without Carl's support and help, well, we certainly couldn't do all of that. So thank you very much, Carl. And then Corey Erickson is one of our volunteer firefighters. Wow. <laughs> Well, as I always tell groups, I love to talk about the fire department. And I can talk for a half hour, an hour, or two hours. I'll try to keep it brief today. Uh, I grew up in this organization. I was born and raised in Redmond, so I do know a little bit about the town. And not very many of us left. But uh, I am very proud of this organization. And, and Gary has asked me to talk today about uh, an upcoming annex, a project that we have been working on now for Oh, in, in probably the better part of six to eight months. And this annexation uh, that I'll talk about today was really driven by the Rural Fire District Board. There are some other indicators and, and aspects of the annexation that uh, will benefit, I believe, everyone in the community as well. And again, I'm, I'm a little bit careful uh, at, at getting into detail today because we are moving forward with this and potentially uh, it could go to the voters, so I have to be <coughs> careful of how I talk about this and how I sell this, but I will try to stick with the facts. What uh, Redmond Fire and Rescue is trying to do is to do a reverse operation, or a reverse role of our business structure. Currently, Redmond Fire and Rescue operates for, by, with, with two separate entities. We're funded by the city of Redmond, taxpayers, we are also funded by the Deschutes County Rural Fire District Number One, and by combining those two sets of funds, is what is how the is how the fire department functions financially. I always look at my my position as being the fire chief for Redmond Fire and Rescue. It's just easier that way uh, instead of saying I work for the city or I work for the district. Legally and technically, I report to the city manager. And, uh, once a month report to the board. What is, what is the background, what is the, the reason for the annexation? Uh, the background goes all the way back to 1944, uh, the city of Redmond and the Deschutes County Rural Fire District number one joined efforts to provide firefighting services for, for our community, both inside the city limits and outside the city limits. That has grown into an agreement today uh, that we call the Fire Fund. And that Fire Fund, again, funded by the city, funded by the district, has become quite challenging, particularly for me as the fire chief. I truly believe, and challenging from an economic way, I truly believe in the next three to five years, if we don't fix our current business model, <coughs> that we will see a reduction in our service level not being able to provide ambulance and fire services at our current level today. Why is that? Well, all of you know, particularly the you that are involved in, in business, as all of you probably are, uh, we 
we are faced with a, with a huge economic downturn, and all of our revenue, not all of our, but 80% of our revenue comes from property tax. And we've all read the paper and know that when the real estate market's in the tank, homes are being foreclosed, people probably aren't going to pay their real estate, their, their property tax. So I'm concerned about that. And in order to keep the fire department going, uh, we are looking at this annexation. Annexation would simply mean that the city of Redmond taxpayers would be annexing their rights or their their piece of the city fire department into the fire district. And in order to do that, it's really a, again it's a financial issue. You will you will not see the service change, which I think is very important to get out to the people. You will not see uh, the rural district will not see a change in their rate. On the city side, the city taxpayer, we are actually uh, selling this as a reduction of their rate. Because on an annual basis, the fire, the, the city taxpayer rate fluctuates. This year, for example, the city will pay $1.89 per thousand, and the fire district, the rural fire district resident will pay $1.75. This annexation, we're simply trying to take and, and stabilize that rate at $1.75. The last six months, we've, we've went through the financial due diligence to see if that $1.75 is enough to operate, if that $1.75 is enough to continue the current level of service that we provide today well into the future. And again, as Gary can tell you, it's been, it's been uh, tremendously, uh, tremendously time consuming <coughs> to go back and, and go through this due diligence period. But we've just completed the financial analysis, and the financial analysis does tell us that uh, annexing the city into the district uh, fiscally makes sense. 